Now in this video, we'll see how to configure the OSPF. Now we have two more two labs coming up in the OSPF here. We'll see with single area as well as multiple area. Now before we go ahead with the configuration, let's try to understand uh, what are the commands we need to add if you want to advertise your networks inside the OSPF. Now the first command we need to go to router OSPF and then we need to define the process ID. Now process ID is, is a number which can be given from 1 to 65,535 which identifies a OSP of processing ra process running on a router. Like uh, take an example, if I have a router, let's say there is a service for a router which is connecting to a customer A and also it's connecting to customer B and let's say there's a customer C also. Now, now in this scenario, uh, the service border and the customer is running some routing protocol and all are using OSPF here. So I'm going to use OSPF here and, and we want to ensure the service border want to ensure that it's going to run three different OSPFs, but, but it has to be maintained in a separate OSPF process. Now, probably what we'll do is we'll use one process ID of one for the customer A, process ID of the two for the customer B and the process ID of three for customer th customer C. Now in this way on the same router we can run multiple instances of OSPF without interfering with each other. Now this process ID is a number which which will identify one OSPF instance but probably in our scenario we, we can use any number and it is locally significant. So which means either you can use the same number on all the routers or we can we can simply use different numbers on different routers. It doesn't matter. So it can be same, it can be different. Now we have to, we must define the process ID here. It is not like your EHRP AS number because normally, you know, uh, you'll get confused like in EHRP, we define the AS number, is it something like that? It's not like that. In case of EHRP, we must define the AS number and that AS number has to match on all the routers. And in case of OSPF, it's also the range is same but it's going to identify the OSP of instance running on a single router. And it has nothing to do with, uh, with, the, a, with the number which is given on the remote routers. Now, apart from that, we need to advertise. Let's say I want to advertise this 192.168.1 network. We are going to write network and then we'll say 192.168.1 network. Now we need to define some wildcard mask. Now wildcard mask, uh, we can say, uh, let me give some uh, an example of how to calculate the wildcard mask. Probably uh, more on this wildcard mask I'll be discussing in the ACL topic. But if you want to get the wildcard mask from the global subnet mask, that is from all 255s, we have to subtract the subnet mask. Now, if you subtract the subnet mask from the global subnet mask, that is, let's say if it is a slash 24 subnet mask, we'll get the wildcard mask. Now the wildcard mask will be 0 .0 .0 So if you want to advertise 192.168.1 network, we need to write the wildcard mask of 000 255. Uh, it's a, like an inverse mask. Now what exactly it says is here, whenever you write the wildcard mask, wherever there is zero, it is going to advertise all the addresses, whichever starts with 192.168.1. So zero means uh, must match. And whereas one means ignore. Ignore means uh, this portion can be anything, but uh, advertise all the addresses whichever starts with 192.168.1. So probably I'll be getting into more in detail on the wildcard mask in the ACL topic. But as of now, I suggest you to just remember this formula where we can uh, subtract from all 255s, subtract the subnet mask to get your wildcard mask. And then we need to define the area and area number. Now that particular interface belongs to which area? Now we got two labs documented in this, one lab with single area and we have another lab with multiple areas. So the lab with multiple areas, we'll, we'll get into this configuration in the next video. But here we'll, we'll get into some configuration on, on single area here. So where I'm, I'm making all the three routers in one area, that is area zero or it can be any other number. Now, if you want to advertise 192.168.1 network, we are going to write one dot network and the wildcard mask is 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.255 based on the formula. And then this, this interface comes in area zero. Now, similar way, advertising 10 dot network, 
with a wildcard mask of 0 0.2552552555 based on the slash 8 subnet mask because the subnet mask will be 2552552550 if I subtract then it will be 0 0.2552552555 will be the wildcard mask and then area 0 now similar way we need to advertise this 192.168.2. network 10. network and 11. network all the three interfaces in area 0 and same way we need to advertise the 11. network and 3. network in area 0 so let's go to the command line and to verify the configuration here I got three routers and all the routers are pre-configured with the IP addresses let's go to the router 1 to verify the IP addresses here as per my topology and then if I verify show IP protocols, I do not have any of the routing protocol configured here. Now we want to configure router OSPF. We need to define the process ID, any number it can be. So normally I use one and advertise the one dot network. If I press enter here, it says incomplete command because you must define the wildcard mask and the area number. Now as per my scenario here, I'm going to advertise all the interfaces in area 0 here. Let's take the diagram here. Now all the all the interfaces I'm going to advertise them in area 0 here. So let's go to the router 1 command line network 192.168.1. network and the sub wildcard mask will be 000255 and then area number. Now the same thing for 10. network 0.255.255.255 area and area 0 so if I give show IP protocols you can see that OSP1 is configured and these are the two networks which we are advertising on the router 1 so let's get into the router 2 configurations router 2 and and finish up the configurations where we'll advertise the router 2 10 dot network 11 dot network and 192.168.2 dot network in area 0 so we'll go to router OSP1 10 dot network 255.255.255 area 0 and then you can see the message comes up the loading to full stage now whatever the seven stages we 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 verified probably once you advertise this interface it will start sending the hello messages and once you advertise this interface it is going to reply to the hello messages and they will go with a neighbor step and all the full st all seven stages will go up now let's finish off the same thing on the remaining routers let's go to Let's go and advertise the 11 dot network and then we are going to advertise 192.168.2 network which is in the LAN 0 .0 0.0.255 and then area 0. Now if you verify show IP protocols on the router 2 we are using OSP of 1 and then uh, the 10, 11 and, and 192.168.1 dot network we are advertising on the, on the router 2 interface. Let's go to the router 3 and finish off the configuration on the router 3 on the router 3 we have uh, two interfaces again router osp of one network 192.168.3. network in the lan which is slash 24 subnet mask and then network 11. network and then 0 0.255.255.255 is the wildcard mask and then area 0. Now i can see on the router 3 also we have a neighborship now for further verification what we'll do is we'll try to verify the first thing I'll go to router 2 and verify the neighborship. Now if I give show IP OSPF neighbor to verify the neighbor table. Now on the router 2 you can see there are two neighbors and the router ID of the router 1 is 192.168.1.100. Now why 192.168.1.100 is taking because if you give show IP protocols you can see the router ID is 192.168.1.100 and if I go and verify the interfaces on this router there are two interfaces one is 10.001 and the other one is 192.168.1. network by default it is going to take the highest IP of the physical interface as a router ID because we did not manually configure the router IDs so that's a default behavior similar way on the router 3 it's going to take the router ID as 182.168.3.100 based on these two interfaces and if I check on the router 2 I think it's going to take 182.168.2.100 as router ID because this is highest IP address out of all the three interfaces. Now the first thing we need to verify the neighborship and if everything is okay I should see the neighborship exactly based on the connectivity 
and you can see the neighborship goes up to full step and you can see the timers here now for every 10 seconds it's going to send the time you can see after 31 30 again the timers goes to 39 again 38 37 like that and this is a neighbor IP address and the interface on which that particular neighbor is connected now if you verify the routing table the next thing I'll go to router 1 and on the router 1 I'm going to verify the routing table if I give show IP route now I can see the routes from the router 3 I'm able to see the routes and you can see this it's showing as O O represents it's learned through OSPF and you can see the code here as well OSPF learn routes and then and then here you can see two values here 110 is the administrative distance and this is the cost cost based on 10 to the power of 8 divided by bandwidth values it's going to generate a number called cost and coming from s0 by 0 interface now similar way if you verify the router 1 show ip osp of database now the router 1 belongs to only area 0 so it is going to maintain the database of only area 0 and the router ID of the router 1 is 192.168.1.100 and it is running the process ID of 1 and the other commands we can verify is show IP protocols and then finally if you if you try to ping from the router 1 LAN interface I should be able to ping to the router 3 LAN interface let's go to the command line of any one of this computer here and I will try to access my I'll try to access any one of this computer desktop I'll go to command line and I'll try to ping to 182.168.3.1 that is on the router 3 LAN I should be able to ping from 1.1 to 3.1 I should get a reply I can see that I'm getting a reply here if you try to trace 182.168.3.1 you can see the packet first goes to 182.168.1.100 and then goes to 10.2 and then goes to 11.2 and then finally reaches 3.1 now this is a very basic lab where we have seen how to configure the OSP of in a single area and generally as per the Cisco recommendations if you have around 30 to 40 routers we can go within a single area but if your network size goes more than that then probably it's recommended to go with multiple areas now we'll be we'll be getting into one more lab in the OSP of in the next lab we'll see how to configure the OSP of in multiple areas